Hello, my name is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of the Chicago Soybean Complex. I'll start with Chicago soybeans themselves. The weekly key reversal down two weeks ago has been the main recent driver in this market. Not only as a pattern on its own, but also because of the significant close below the optimized February to October head and shoulders top neckline currently at 1258. This neckline had held the market up since mid-August and its fracturing caused a significant fall down through both nearby big 50% Fibonacci lines of the April 2020 to May 2021 move at 12.43 and the 2019 to May 2021 move at 12.29. The latter happening actually last week. So how does this all look in the larger picture? Now I said 10 weeks ago here how I'd noticed two new possible patterns. The first was a mid-June to mid-August ascending triangle. The flat topside trend line was capped by the resistance at 1459, whilst the broken rising mid-June today uptrend, currently at 1439, is the lower trend line. The second related pattern is a seeming bearish halfway hesitation that takes the action from early to mid-June, making the left flagpole. And now the market has not just made a bit of a mess, but instead a real mess of the right-hand side of this flagpole. In part, probably a large part actually, this is because of due to the clash of the other asc uh, ascending triangle pattern happening at the same time. Anyway, prices had moved lower, reaching the old target X again in the 1290 area. This was the original primary target below for the ascending triangle. And this is where we've been held. Further below, we've had for a few weeks now, a few potential targets. Target X1 is a secondary target for the same ascending triangle in the 1202 area. Target X2 is the first possible ragged bear flag target in the 1178 area, whilst Target X3 in the 1085 area is the secondary target for this ragged looking possible bear flag. Now looking around there seemed last week to be limited supports below until the 1140s, however I noticed a possible nascent bear channel after the market started turning up last week and that's currently between 1174 and 1268. Whilst the market did not reach down and touch the lower channel line, it seems reasonable as a potential dynamic support and resistance. This week, prices have moved up as far as the underside of the neckline once again, just over the 250% Fibonacci lines and have seemingly stalled. This will become very interesting now as the neckline and the upper bear channel line intersect next week, thus combining their supposed bearish pressures. Additionally, the short medium moving average currently at 1289 is tracking parallel with the upper bear channel and will likely also intersect with the neckline early to middle November. So we have some potentially interesting days ahead. Now I would normally leave it there except I back into early September a short and very interesting conversation with Andre Sheckman in Brazil, a very good friend of mine and also a technical analyst. He asked me to look at the whole of 2021 here as a potential possible head and shoulders top. And I have to say what he asked does indeed have merit. I will continue to ponder upon this further as though the neckline is now, well the action is now below the optimized neckline, it is still not as clear cut a move lower as I would like, at least not yet. Continuing caution is therefore still advised, at least for now. Chicago Soybean Meal I wrote some 14 weeks ago and I quote, the month of May was a monthly key reversal down. It is important to remember that, end of quote. What I wanted to emphasize at that time and every time since, including now, is that everything since May has been in the shadow of that singularly bearish pattern. With this in mind, it brings into perspective the breakdown that happened in June, down through the long moving average, currently 384.90, and a further drop down through to the lower time, currently 281.40, of the bearish 2021 Andrews Pitchfork. The subsequent bounce up only ended in the market going sideways throughout July and August, and also running along the underside of the middle time, currently 3.2780. As part of the action, prices created a lower trend line, currently 3.4430, and thus the market drew a descending triangle pattern over July and August. In late August, prices punched down through the lower trend line of the ascending triangle and finally reached target X in the 337.20 area. This was the original target for the bear flag seen during May and June. 
However, when prices dropped down four weeks ago, the market must have felt that it also was too far away from the comfort of the same middle time, and prices then moved back towards it. However, three weeks ago, the market was ready again to plunge lower and punch down through the following. The middle time, the old target X, the low of early September at 3.32 and a half, and made new lows and low closes not seen since September last year. Last week, prices finally reached down to target X1, the initial target for the descending triangle in the 3.26.10 area. A secondary target X2 now lies a little further below in the 3.06.80 area. I should point out the caveat that secondary targets are far harder to achieve than the initial ones, though we came awfully close to the target last week. Since the middle of last week, prices have again moved up, mourning the distance between the middle time and where they were. This week yesterday, yesterday in fact actually, prices managed to reach up and touch that same middle time once again. It seems the market is now hesitating with a degree of relief after reaching the middle time. The question now is whether prices will re resume the move lower or not. Just in case, we now have the declining short medium moving average currently at 3 th uh, 3.38.30, running lower and parallel with the middle time. And that would be the one to watch on any push up over the middle time. As a continuing final point, I would like to once again re recognize the wonderful job the bearish Andrews pitch off for 2021, originally drawn back in May has done in its overall task of channeling the markets lower. It has been useful and valid up until this very day and seems likely to be so for some time forward. That is the key to the market here. The bearish Andrews pitchfork, when it finally gets busted or adjusted to a bearish shift pitchfork or some other pattern, then we can look for new ideas. But until then, the bearish incentive continues to be run and ruled in this market by this same simple bearish Andrews pitchfork. Chicago Soybean Oil. For months now, I've highlighted a rather lopsided diamond pattern seen over May to July. Looking again today, I can still find it to be the one key pattern here, but it has since had some other competing patterns. A few words again on this diamond pattern. Now, diamond patterns can be tops, bottoms, or continuations. In this particular case, it is a top of sorts. Back in late July, the market broke down through the lower trend line, but not but took until the end of July to really get going on the downside. Anyway, prices overcame the obstacle of the medium moving average, currently at 61.24, continuing their journey lower, down through the congestion zone between 57.64 and 59.44, which you can see as a striped band across the middle of the daily chart. I'm punching through the lower trend line, currently 52.16, of the July to date descending wedge pattern. Now, Prices did try and exploit this breach, but all they managed was an additional, if short, bear channel over mid-August to late September. Four weeks ago, the market had a pair of obstacles on their way lower. The rising long moving average, currently 57.08, and the 50% Fibonacci line for the whole of 2021 so far at 55.43. This time, the market did not overcome these, to be honest, fine-looking obstacles, and prices started to rise up through the striped congestion band and this week up through the medium moving average at the second time of asking. This move up also meant that prices had punched up and out of the descending wedge pattern. Thus I've placed the potential target X2 top side in the 6680 area. This is for the recent descending wedge pattern but on the upside. Now I know this is a big ask but unless this is a false break higher then that is what a potential target may look like. Anyway, just in case I've as an alternative to this concept, two targets below for the diamond pattern. The initial target X in the 5590 area, and that has been achieved. We still have a secondary target X1 in the 5380 area. As you are no doubt aware, secondary targets are much harder to achieve. So I'm not holding my breath over achieving target X1 below, especially as a gently rising long moving average has apparently put pay to ideas of getting down there. To be honest, achieving the primary target X on its own was a big win, and going the extra bit to reach target X1 is not essential. One final point. I have drawn a new, small, bullish Andrews pitchfork for the mid-September to early October period. The market's currently in between the lower time, currently at 61.71, and the middle time, currently 64.48. 
it is a new acute and short pitch for curve despite these points against it it still has a certain elegance though looking at the way the market is looking to create what could be a potentially key reversal down or at least a pipe top today that may be a short-lived bullish Andrews pitchfork we'll see thank you for listening this weekly broadcast gives you essential market patterns and consequences please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited and here comes the final bit <laughs>